Again, ladies and gentlemen, we see a rational expression. We automatically know, OK, I don't want to deal with fractions, right? You offer a thing of subtracting fractions. Hey, if you remember how to do it and you can do it and you're comfortable with it, that's awesome. That's the way you should be. But for the majority of you, you guys just don't even want fractions. You don't even want to talk to fractions. You don't even want to deal with them. You don't want to see them. You want to get rid of them, right? Out of your life. So what we simply need to do is when creating our fractions, let's just get rid of them. So the best way to get rid of our fractions is to multiply by the LCM. So we look at this and we say, what's our LCM? Now, some of you might look at this and say, all right, well, what we've done before is we just take cake in the denominator for each one of these three and said that was the LCM, right? So you guys might say, well, logic might tell you, OK, the LCM A equals x plus 5, x plus 3, and x squared plus 8x plus 15. Now, that's a pretty big LCM. And that's going to be a lot to multiply everything by there. But what we want to do is, can we simplify? Always look, ladies and gentlemen, especially when you have a trinomial, can we factor that a little bit further? And of course, what we notice is, this can be factored down to x plus 3 times x plus 5. So therefore, we notice that this is redundant, right? LCM says least common multiple. So we don't need to uh, multiply this again. So our LCM then is just going to contain x plus 5 and x plus 3. So now what I'm going to do, yes? So would x plus 5 and x plus 3 just cancel out x squared plus 8x plus 3? Yeah, it's because they're the exact same, right? So they're just going to divide to 1. So we'll get that in a second. So now I need to multiply every single term by my LCM. <laughs> I guess I already had this one conversation before, but I guess some students maybe didn't understand the directions. OK, so now what we look at this is we notice, all right, so if I was going to multiply this times that, I notice that my denominators divide to 1. So I'm just going to be left with. 2x times x plus 3. We already talked about how this factored down is this. So we know they're exactly the same. So if I divide the same expression over the exact same expression, that divides to 1. So therefore, I'm just left with x squared minus x plus 10. Notice my inclusion of the parentheses. Okay, You're subtracting this whole term. So you're subtracting x squared minus x plus 10. So I want to put parentheses in there so I remember that. Then when I go over here, I notice x plus 3 divided by x plus 3. That divides the 1. So that's going to equal 3 times x plus 5. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we can apply distributive property. So therefore, I have 2x squared plus 6x minus x squared plus x minus 10 equals 3x plus 15. Whew. It's a big multi-step equation, right? Taking you back to algebra 1, flashbacks. Wow. OK, so now before we can combine like terms, or before we get our variable to the same side, let's combine like terms. So I know my x squareds I can combine, my x's I can combine. So therefore, I just left with x squared plus 7x minus 10 equals 3x plus 15. And automatically, ladies and gentlemen, I noticed that this is going to be a quadratic, right? Because I still have an x squared. So rather than just saying, oh, I'm going to get my x by itself like we did with the linear equation, now I need to see, I need to set this up as a quadratic. I need to set this equal to 0. Okay, so now I will get everything over to the same side so it's equal to 0. So I subtract 3x, and let's subtract 15. So make sure you guys do that on the same side. And therefore, I'm left with x squared plus 4x minus 25 equals 0. And I don't remember having that as my answer. Um, OK, where did I go wrong? It's plus 15. Well, I have a positive 10. Oh, this should have been, oh, I wrote the problem wrong. My bad. Uh, oh, 
There you go. Sorry about that. I knew I was looking at it. I'm like, where did my problem go wrong? So now, there you go. Um, no, no, no. I'm sorry. x plus 5, x minus 1. So therefore, now I can apply the zero product property and say x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 1. OK? Cool? Amazing? Good. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that was a six-minute video. That's a good one.